Now we have behind us a totally new system which is being tested for 10 months already. It's where we use charcoal to safely treat human sewage, human waste, so it's human solids and urine. We've been putting in one amount of human solids per day and two liters of urine and there's literally no smell whatsoever. What's really interesting is that if you leave a bucket or any kind of human waste lying around for more than an hour, especially in the tropics, it's gonna stink to high heaven. There's no smell whatsoever. No smell coming off this at all. This is just like a thrown together thing. Sometimes people think, well, if it's made out of rubbish, it must be rubbish. But actually, this is just a proof of concept. We've been using charcoal in the system, inoculated with microbes, and we have a water tank that just continuously cycles through the whole system, cleaning the water as it goes through the, uh, the biochar itself. And as you can see, the tomatoes, this is just a month. I mean, it's amazing how fast these tomatoes have grown. And I will show you some other ones that we planted which were actually even bigger that went into the ground compared to these ones, which was like, they were like half the size. So we'll take a look at this now and just walk you through the different steps on how to build it. I'm gonna just explain all the steps that were put into place in order to build this, which is a bit different to the other one. And so it started off, and I'm gonna just put pictures on top. It started off as a tank like this in the ground, which thanks to James, uh, he dug that because my back is at me at the moment and that was just a water tank then what we did is we put some bricks around it to support the this half a tank it's a it's a bit of a broken um big water tank that we cut uh, just nice and neatly this is in order to catch any kind of uh, rainwater. so we have some holes here but we also have some holes here so it doesn't overfill it too much we just need a little bit of rainwater uh, to go in there and i'm gonna test it during the monsoon time I might have to drill some more holes around the edge to prevent too much water going in the reason being is because plants do use up the water and there's quite in the tropics there's a bit of uh, evaporation as well so about maybe five to ten liters per week we have to replenish as well but that doesn't really clean the water it's more the charcoal that cleans the water now the next step is we put this fella on top of there and we filled it up with just uh, coconut charcoal. Now the charcoal, we inoculated it using the old charcoal from the other tower. We just dug it all together, uh, mixed it all together, sorry, and then we basically um, had the charcoal to put it into it. And the next step was to put another container on top, which is this one here. And in that one, we put a, a, a kind of a, a bucket with lots of holes in it. And also then a sieve, a red sieve on top of that, with a pipe going through it. Uh, and a green, that green filter thing was placed, or rather like taped on top, just as a bod job for now, just to, um, you know, just to kind of have it functional for the next 10 months. Uh, that's the idea. Uh, of course, there's better ways to build this. Uh, we use, of course, bricks just to kind of hold things in place. And we put this entire, the other pipes through this, um, almost like a tray that disperses the little amount of water that does get lifted up by it the airlift pump which we actually stuck in the bottom tank and it's just gone through this um, hole here at the top and it's just every 10 seconds or so it gives off about I don't know maybe 10, 10, 15, 20 milliliters of water and that's enough to cycle the whole water the, 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 the grey water if you want to call it that through the whole system continuously and I estimate about it probably would take about three, three, four hours maybe to cycle the entire 100 litre tank um, through the whole thing and just clean the water. Now it's really important, so basically the, all the waste goes through, through this little sieve, um, not a sieve, sorry, funnel, into the, um, uh, the bucket down below with the holes in it. We, I also put some worms in it, composting worms, just to see if that works. Um, but what happens is all the urine, so two liters of urine and once a day uh, human waste solids goes in there. And then the plan is either the worms will actually eat it all up or what is also important is to have a little amount of water. So I, I drilled a few holes over the bucket so some of the water will actually go through the, um, the solids. Now the reason for that is because 
first of all, the water is aerated because it drips through the whole system, so it picks up a lot of oxygen on the way. And the bacteria and the microbes that we use to inoculate the charcoal are all aerobic bacteria, so that's why there is no smell. Um, you don't want any anaerobic bacteria in there. And also the liquid, there's enough liquid to kind of wash through the compost, or what becomes the compost eventually, the human solids, to make it go through the entire system and get stuck in the actual charcoal. So the plan is to have all the, uh, the humus particles, which also have a huge uh, amount of cation exchange capacity, for them to actually hold on to the nutrients really well, and charcoal does that as well. Um, so basically it's just a, a, a water cleaning filter that has plants growing in it and the plants basically eat the, the waste of the bacteria, the bacteria then eat on the, on the sewage and that's basically how it works. So we're picking the food here, we're putting our waste in there and it's a continuous cycle and most of the water is just continuously recycled and cleaned. So it's a fantastic system. We so far had 10 months of uh, trials with it. And I just wanted to build a little bit of a bigger system just to see if it actually would work. Now, that's pretty much um, how the whole thing is built. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty amazed. I just want to show you really quickly the, the different sizes of tomatoes, just real quick. So these stems are really thick. All four stems are really thick and they were they were all the weakest plants that I put in. Now, those are the tomatoes. Um, some of the stems are pretty thin and straggly. There's one or two, three, four tomatoes that are close enough in size, but not quite. It, it just, they look taller because we staked them up recently, but to be honest, like the, the stems themselves, I can't really get close at the moment because my battery on the camera is not working, so I'm using the mains electricity. But you can actually see that there's about 30%, the, the ones on the, the, I don't know what to call the system. By the way, anybody got a cool name for this thing? Just let us know. But, um, like all these tomatoes, the stems are only about half as thick and there is not as much foliage as on the other ones. And they were about that big when they went in, about that big, and the other ones were about that big when they went in. And they went in at the same day, same time, roughly. And... So, I mean, it's really growing stuff really well. They're flowering already. There's only one plant that's flowering, the best one there. Um, and all of them are pretty much flowering. So that's that. Let me just show you. Let's just talk a little bit more about um, how the whole biology works. Now, so one of you actually commented that charcoal is at about 12, um, the pH of 12. And that is quite true. Uh, a lot of charcoals are actually quite high uh, pH, very alkaline. And so you're wondering maybe, well, how can you actually grow, how can you actually grow stuff in charcoal when the pH is so high? Well, this is really interesting. I want to just bring your attention to the samba spinach. And I observed the very same thing in the last experiment, the 10 month one, whereby the actual samba spinach likes it very acidic and tomatoes don't so much. So you can already see that the pH from the actual urine, which is acidic, but also because the bacteria, you know, exude, not exude, but they admit a, a bio slime, which is actually um, like neutral in nature. So they can actually either tweak the, the pH either from a very acidic state to a neutral state or from a very, very alkaline state to a more neutral state. Um, a little bit more alkaline than neutral actually, but uh, they can bring the pH down um, quite a lot and after a few months you will see this one take off because I measured the pH on this one and I think it was around 6.2 which is really interesting because it means that we can grow a lot of plants in charcoal once the system is going properly but as you can see these ones tomatoes are not having any problem whatsoever with growing in the charcoal but the summer spinach had so that's that's interesting now the way nature works is this okay Plants will grow, they will photosynthesize, then they will, exude, uh, they will exude sugars at their roots, which will attract or rather grow large amounts of soil bacteria, which is the soil bacteria that we put into the actual charcoal. When we first inoculated, we used um, jaggery to like, kind of simulate that process. And now the, the plants are exuding the sugar, which is feeding 
uh, the plants, but uh, the bacteria, but also the, all the human waste and nutrients, which was used to be plant matter, is what the bacteria are actually eating. And that is also feeding uh, the bacteria in a large way. Those bacteria get then gobbled up by uh, the larger um, nematodes and also, of course, the protozoa. Their, their waste then becomes nutrients. Those, all those nutrients that are being made and created by bacteria are then, of course, stored in the charcoal. And eventually what happens is the humus content, basically humus is something, uh, is a material that has been broken down by uh, microbes and uh, larger critters. And those are the particles which cannot be broken down any further. And they also have a very high cation exchange capacity, so holding nutrient capacity, nutrient holding capacity. And that is really cool. So we are going to end up with nutrient uh, holding capacity of the charcoal and the uh, humus and uh, lots of nutrients. And we're going to have a um, clean water system because, of course, charcoal filters water and cleans water really, really well. I mean, it's, it's, it's used as a filter. So that's kind of how nature also would. So what all we're doing is we're copying nature, we're cleaning water, we are growing food, and that's basically it. And you can actually do it with human solids as well. I never actually expected solids to be really a big problem because the solids, especially in the tropics, it just breaks down so fast. It just, you know, becomes humus very quickly. And, and that's basically all there is really to it. The urine I was more worried about, but we've already kind of proven uh, 200 milligrams of urine in the system won't be a problem. And now we're testing two liters of it in a small system like that. Now, one last thing I want to mention, and there will be results on this, okay? In about 10 months time, I'll just take it all apart again and just show you the, what we've been doing. I might replant the tomatoes with something else as well because they're gonna be on their way out in another month or two. I can imagine if you had a, a wall that's facing south, south and you had like big like troughs like this and you you filled those with charcoal and had this whole thing dripping through like on top of each other like maybe a gap like that and then have the plants coming out like that you could probably do a whole uh, a really big family using a system like that just using troughs going down like that with with a very small airlift pump and you're using very little electricity and you're growing all the food for your family. I mean, it's a real no-brainer, it's possible. Um, and then the cool thing as well is, as, as a byproduct, you're always going to be creating biochar because the charcoal will be highly inoculated with large amounts of um, bacteria, protozoa. Like when we looked under the microscope at this one here, you know, I, I couldn't show it in the last video so well, but I mean, I saw tons of protozoa. Um, just skidding around the place and tons of bacteria and so biochar making machine is what it is as well. Um, I don't know how long it would take before you have to replace the charcoal. It could be several years. It could be, I mean, the longest I've done is 10 months, but I think it's some university needs to take this on. Somebody with money needs to try this all out and because uh, I can only afford this, okay? All right, so I just want to show you real quickly the water coming out. Um, normally I put a stone in here and that just kind of makes sure that the water spreads evenly on both sides. And then there's holes drilled in there and that's the tray that just distributes the, uh, the sewage water. But to be honest, it's literally, you know, considering that it's been like a whole month of urine and poo in there, and the, the bucket, by the way, is not actually filling up either. That's really interesting as well. Here in the tropics, things just degrade really fast but I mean if that doesn't prove it to anybody that me touching this stuff I mean there's eight people or ten people have actually put their donations of urine in there you know if that doesn't prove it to anybody I don't know what will so there you have it if you want oh by the way airlift pumps uh, my first ever video on this whole thing um, it's about 10 minutes in how to actually build one real quickly I'll link it in the description down below so that's it, that concludes the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, just let me know. Any ideas in, down in the comment section down below would be great. Um, any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, but ideas is something I, I, love, I love to read about, you know, like other people's ideas on the thing. Just let us know what you thought. Okay, that's it, concludes the video, and hope to see you in the next one. We'll put in some results in about 10 months time and update you then.